Here is a situation. You have multiple forms on your website, and after the form is successfully submitted, all of the visitors are redirected to the same thank you page. How can you distinguish in Google Analytics which form was submitted? In this video, I will explain several options. And at the end of this video, I will share two more additional ideas that can help you. Here I have a demo form, and first let's inspect how it works. So I will enter an email, click the button, and here is the thank you page. The URL contains a thank you, but let's say that there are multiple forms on this website and they all redirect the visitor to the same thank you page right here. So what can we do? First, let's implement the general thank you page tracking and then we will take a look on how can we get the information of which form redirected the visitor to this particular thank you page. So in Google Tag Manager, let's go to triggers and we are going to send an event to Google Analytics 4 when URL contains, let's say, pages slash thank you. So in triggers, I can click new, trigger configuration, and let's say that I will select DOM ready, where page path contains pages slash thank you like this. And then let's name this trigger DOM thank you page and click save. Then let's go to tags. And in my Google Tag Magic container, I have already installed GA4 configuration tag, also known as Google Tag. If you have no idea what this is, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video where I explain how to install Google Analytics 4 with Google Tag Manager. So once you have installed GA4 in Google Tag Manager, and I mean the basic setup where you just have the Google Tag with your measurement ID, then click New, Tag Configuration, Google Analytics, Google Analytics 4 event, and here we have to enter the measurement ID of our Google Analytics 4 data stream. You can get your measurement ID by going to admin in GA4, then data streams, select website data stream, and then click to copy the measurement ID. Then you can paste it here and we can enter event name. For example, we can name this, let's say form submission. Then if this was the only form on your website, then it would have been enough just to send this event because you know which form was submitted. But in this tutorial, we are going to use some things where it will make sense to send some additional event parameters. But for now, let's keep this as it is and in triggering, click anywhere and add the DOM thank you page trigger. Finally, let's name this tag and click save. So now if this event fires, it will just send the event name but it will be difficult for us to distinguish which form was actually submitted because as I've said, let's say that there are multiple forms that redirect the visitor to the same page. So let's take a look at the first method of how you could try to understand from which form the visitor landed on this page. First, let's go to Google Tag Manager, click preview and enter URL of the form, not of the thank you page, but of the form. Click connect. The preview mode has connected and now I will submit the form and click the button. Here I am on the thank you page and let's go to Google Tag Manager preview mode and let's select, for example, DOM ready and then go to variables. And here keep looking for refer. If you don't see the refer at all, then go to Google Tag Manager variables, then configure and here enable refer and then refresh the preview mode by clicking the preview button and submit the form again. So here I see the refer and it shows the URL of the previous page. In my case, it says demo form. So by looking, for example, at this part, I can easily understand from where the visitor landed on my thank you page. Due to some security settings on your website made by developers, it is possible that the refer will not contain any useful information. If that is your case, then you will need to take a look at other methods I explain in this video. But if you see the previous pages information in the refer, then you can use this method that I will show you now. Basically what we could do is that we can take this path information from the refer and we can do that by creating a new Google Tag Manager variable. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, then scroll down and in the user defined variables, click new, then variable configuration and select URL. Here, we want to get just the path of the URL. So the path is whatever comes after the domain. So this is the path. 
before any hashtags or question marks. So in our case, this is the path. But this is not enough because this variable by default will take the path of the current page, which would be this. But we want to take the path of the previous page. Therefore, in more settings, we need to select a different URL source. Here you should select refer. So this variable will take the refer and will return the part of the refer, which is path. Let's name this variable like that and click save. Let's test if this variable is working. So click preview. I will be redirected again to the form. I will submit the form, click the button. Here is the thank you page. And now if I click DOM ready, because that's when my form submission event will fire. And if I go to variables here, if I find the URL referrer path, I will see the previous pages path. Keep in mind that refer always returns the previous pages information. If you want to get the information of, let's say what happened two pages ago, then refer is not a solution because it will always show you just the most recent previous page. Or as I've said, in some situations, maybe due to some security settings of your website, refer might not contain any value, but in my case, I'm lucky. So I can go now to tags and use that refer path in the form submission tag. I can click the tag, then edit the tag and add a new event parameter, which can be, let's say form URL or just form or whatever. Let's say that I will use form URL like that. And here I will insert the refer path variable. Click save and let's test. Click the preview. The preview mode will refresh. Then I will submit the form. Here's the thank you page. And in the preview mode, if I click DOM ready, here I see that my tag has fired. And if I click the tag, switch to values, I will see that together with the event, I sent form URL, which is this one. Now let's go to Google Analytics. And then in the admin section, go to data display and debug view. And here I have the form submission event where form URL contains the URL of the form from which the visitor was redirected to a thank you page. Now, how are you going to see this value later in your reports? Form URL is not among the built in dimensions in Google Analytics 4. So if you want to use this later in your reports, you have to register a custom dimension. That's why let's copy form URL and I mean the name, not the value. And then in the admin, go to data display, custom definitions. Then in the custom dimensions section, click create custom dimension and then enter form URL, keep the scope event. And then here in the event parameter field, enter form URL. It's important that it is entered here exactly as it was sent from your Google Tag Manager container or what you see in the debug view. Then click save. And after you have done testing, don't forget to publish your changes in Google Tag Manager by clicking the submit button and then completing all the necessary steps. After you do this, you will need to wait between 24 and 48 hours. And then you will be able to see how many times forms were submitted. And you will also be able to use the form URL custom dimension in your reports. In this tutorial, we're focusing more on the setup, not on the reporting part. But in general, if you want to learn various ways how to build reports, then take a look at my Google Analytics 4 course. I will post a link to it below the video. So this was the first method how you can track multiple forms that have the same thank you page. Another option could be that maybe you could ask a developer to add an additional URL parameter of the thank you page. Let me show you what I mean. So I have already done this to the form. And let me show you what do I mean when I say custom URL parameter. Here is the form. If I submit the form, I am redirected to a thank you page, but there is a parameter called form name. In fact, the name of this parameter could be anything. It could be just form, form name, form URL, whatever. However, what's important is that it goes after the question mark, which means that this is a URL parameter if we speak in more technical terms. And we have the value or the name of the previous form. So if the visitor submits some other form, for example, demo form two, and then lands on this thank you page, then this URL would contain demo form two. So maybe you could cooperate with a website developer 
and ask him or her to include some parameter of which value is the name of the form from where the visitor came. Because with Google Tag Manager, it will be fairly simple to fetch this parameter's value, which is right here. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, then Variables, and then click New in the User Defined Variables section. Click Anywhere, and then select URL. This time, we are going to get Query. Query parameter is the URL parameter. Or in other words, the Query parameter variable will get a particular Query parameter that you define. So I will copy this parameter name, and I will paste it right here. The parameter name is also known as query key. And then let's name this variable like that. Click Save. Now I can go to the tag and let's forget the previous example. So instead of the refer path, I will insert the query parameter variable, which returns form name. We can keep the form URL as it is. Or if you want, you can name this form name. That's up to you. Click Save. Now let's test if this is working. Click Preview. Then let's submit the form again and click Subscribe to Updates. Here's the thank you page. Here is the form information. And if I go to the preview mode and go to DOM ready, I will see that the tag has fired and I see form URL. And here is the value that we extracted from the URL. So this is working fine. And if I go to the debug view of Google Analytics 4, I will see that new form submission and the correct value. In this case, I don't need to register the form URL as a custom dimension again, because I've already done that in the example number one. And the third method of this video also includes developers. If you or your developers don't want to pollute the URL with additional parameters, you could use a data layer push. Basically, it means that your developers could add some data to a thing called data layer. And then with Google Tag Manager, you can take that data and use in your tags. Here is a sample code snippet that your developer could implement on the thank you page. Here we are pushing data to the data layer where event name is form submission, but it can be whatever you want. It can be form submission, it can be form submit or anything else. But here, this part should be dynamically replaced by your developer. And this should contain the name of the actual form that the visitor submitted. So just copy pasting this code is not enough the developer must write some additional code to dynamically replace this one. So let's say that on my demo website, I have already talked with a developer and the developer implemented this code. So let's test what is happening in the data layer. I go to Google Tag Manager, Preview, and here is the form page. Now I will submit the form, click the button, and as you can see, the URL no longer contains the query parameter. I just see the success message. But if I go to the preview mode of Google Tag Manager, and if the developer implemented this properly, then I will see the form submission event. And if I expand it, I will see the form name as well. However, if I go to variables, I will not see that demo form one anywhere. I mean, in this particular shape. But since we have this in the data layer, we can create a variable that will return this parameter's value, which is right here. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, Variables, and in the user defined variables, click New, Variable Configuration, and Data Layer Variable. Here we have to enter the parameter name, which is form name, and let's name this variable. Then click Save, and we can go to Tags, Form Submission, and then instead of our previous examples variable, we can insert the data layer variable. And in fact, we could even change the trigger from DOM ready to form submission. So yeah, let's do that. In the triggering, let's remove this trigger. And instead, we are going to create a new trigger. So click plus, trigger configuration, and then custom event. Here we will insert the event name, which is form underscore submission. And let's name this trigger. Click Save. So this tag will fire when this event is pushed to the data layer. And from the data layer, we are going to take the form name that we will send as a form URL. Click Save. Let's test if this is working. Click Preview. 
continue and then submit the form. Here's the thank you page. And if I go to tag assistant, click on form submission, I will see that my tag fired. And this is the value that we got from the data layer. And I can even go to the debug view. Here's the event. And here I see the form URL with the correct value. And that's how you can track multiple forms that redirect visitors to the same thank you page. But that's not all. There are two more options, using cookies and trigger groups. If you want to learn more about them, I have a blog post and you will find a link to it below the video. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.